Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow, from my books a crease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain, rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with terrors never felt before. So that now to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some light visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping. And so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what they're at us, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter. When, with many flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with my lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though my crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art shorn no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore, quoth the raven, nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters is only stock and store. Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster Followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore. 
to the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking with this ominous bird of yore. What grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking, nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining, that the lamp light gloated o'er. But whose velvet lining, with the lamp gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tuffled floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by angels he has sent thee, respite, respite and nepenthe, thee, from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, thee, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead, tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil. By that heaven bends above us, by God we both adore. Tell this soul with star laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Be that word or sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting, Get thee back into the tempest of the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken, Leave thy loneliness unbroken, Quit thy bust above my door. Take thy break from out my heart, and take thy form from my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the placid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him, streaming, throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow, that lies floating on the floor, shall be lifted nevermore.